Hi everyone, this is Dr. Stefan. In this video I'd like to talk about pulmonary fibrosis life expectancy. And apologies for the background, I'm trying to shoot this as I'm traveling, but I thought it's been a long time since I've recorded the video, and I'd like to continue doing this. So, this is a bit of a grim topic, I, I admit, but let's talk a little bit about pulmonary fibrosis as a diagnosis and what this mean for, means for life expectancy, because I think it's a really serious question that a lot of people are asking. So, if you look online, actually the data that you will find is a little bit scary, and I understand that. The only thing is that it depends a lot on the type of pulmonary fibrosis that you are dealing with. So if you are dealing with, for example, idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, the information may be scarier than for other types of pulmonary fibrosis. And even in the case of idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, which is just one subtype, there may be different patients who have different life expectancies, depending on how advanced the condition is, how quickly it is progressing, so what is the disease behavior over time. So this is why it's extremely difficult to give a precise number, even though you may want that to, you know, for example, thinking about really dark things, if you want to plan, you know, how things will go in the next few years, you may want to know that information, but it can be difficult because there are so many types of pulmonary fibrosis, it's not just one. And pulmonary fibrosis, as I've said in other videos, just means lung scarring. If it is idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, it just means lung scarring of an unknown or undeterminate cause. But there can be things like chronic hypersensitivity pneumonitis, which is a type of pulmonary fibrosis. Well, it can lead to pulmonary fibrosis that is related to environmental things. In inflammatory reactions in the lungs triggered by different things that we breathe in. And it can be different from various people to various people. There can be occupational lung fibrosis. So for example, people who have been exposed to asbestos may develop pulmonary fibrosis, but it may be much uh, less progressive than other forms of pulmonary fibrosis. It can be linked sometimes with autoimmune or rheumatological diseases such as rheumatoid arthritis. And in that situation, obviously, if we get the systemic disease, the rheumatoid arthritis, the autoimmune disease under control, it may be that the pulmonary fibrosis also stops progressing. So there can be a lot of things. So there is personalized medicine and each patient is a little bit different. So obviously, as I've mentioned these types, we can move on to just talk a little bit about idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. So this is the scary one, the, the one that people really fear and they think about um, pulmonary fibrosis in the sense of idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis when they talk about the prognosis and life expectancy. Now, if you read the data online, I cannot emphasize this enough, you will see scary things. For example, the life expectancy from diagnosis in cases of idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis with a median survival of three to five years. Now, a median is basically the middle number of a large group of people. So it can be that some people with idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis may have a life expectancy that could be less than that, but it can also be much longer than that. So I can tell you from experience that in our clinics, in the interstitial lung diseases clinics, we have patients who may have a diagnosis of idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis and they're still alive after seven, eight years. They may be on treatment, so that can influence as well something uh, related to prognosis and life expectancy. So think about that. But three to five years is a median number for idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, which I have to remind you is a subtype of all the other types of pulmonary fibrosis or lung scarring. And remember that always, even if you get a label of idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis as a diagnosis, it is a label. It is a diagnosis of exclusion. So people arrive at that diagnosis by ruling out other conditions. So your doctor may run some blood tests, they may perform um, a bronchoscopy to do a lung lavage to see if what, uh, bronchoalveolar lavage to see whether there's inflammation in the lungs. They may query you about occupational and environmental exposures. Then they'll integrate all this information before making a diagnosis. If there's no convincing evidence that something in the environment or another condition is triggering the lung fibrosis or the lung scarring, they may then call it idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. Sometimes that diagnosis is also made for pragmatic reasons so that you can access treatment or antifibrotic treatment that is only available maybe in your country only for idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. So you may have to carry that label even though your condition may not match fully 
the criteria for the diagnosis. So this is where it gets very nuanced. So please talk to your doctor. This is really, really important to talk to your doctor about what it means in your case to have pulmonary fibrosis, what's the disease behavior like, and that can be monitored with uh, lung function over time, with repeat CT scans sometimes in some instances. So really, really important to see what it means in your case. It's very hard to look up online what the survival is. And if you think about it, it depends also on the timing of the diagnosis. If, for example, idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis is diagnosed in someone who has a lot of other health problems, for example, severe heart disease, or cancer or something else, it may be that the fibrosis is the last on the list of problems that needs to be addressed. So really, really important to think about the context for each individual person. So the best way to think about life expectancy and prognosis in cases of pulmonary fibrosis, whatever the cause may be, is to think about monitoring the disease behavior. And this is really important. And your doctor will advise what's the best way to do that in your case. And that can be either through repeating lung function every six months, three to six months, every year, for example, to see if the numbers go down over time, if there's a trend. Sometimes it can be stable for a very long time and maybe treatment is not recommended in the first place. Sometimes your doctor may recommend walking tests to see walking tests to see how far you're able to walk. If you have any oxygen um, levels that are going low, they may be uh, recommending repeat CT scans to see if the images are getting worse. But these uh, monitoring strategies de depend from person to person and from resources um, and depending on the resources in your local area and your local country. There are also some other things that may come into play when we talk about life expectancy and how quickly your condition may progress. So sometimes it may be the extent of scarring on the lungs at diagnosis. So for example, if there's a lot of fibrosis at the moment of diagnosis, that may mean that the prognosis may be a little bit worse. Whereas if you only have very mild disease, maybe keeping an eye on that may be all that is needed. Sometimes the exact pattern on the chest CT scan, so on the CAT scan on your chest, if there, is, uh, there are specific patterns, some of them may be associated with a faster progression. So things like UIP pattern, usual interstitial pneumonia pattern, that is something that is most closely associated with idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. So then that may mean that that pattern of scarring on the lungs may progress faster. So there may be a more rapid progression. So this is something that your doctor can inform you in your case. But that actual pattern can be triggered by other things, not only IPF. So this is where it gets a little bit tricky. There may be a role for family predisposition. So if you've had other members of the family suffering with pulmonary fibrosis, that can also play a role. So that can influence the progression in your case. So you may need more rapid intervention potentially. You may not tolerate the treatments in the same way as someone who doesn't have familial predisposition and genetic predisposition. It also boils down to exposures. So if you have ongoing uh, noxious exposures to your lungs, so if you're continuing to smoke, for example, if you're still working in a toxic environment where you're inhaling a lot of dusts, fumes, things like that, that may accelerate the progression of the fibrosis. Um, there may be also lifestyle factors which play a role into survival and uh, you know how long someone may live with pulmonary fibrosis of so things like, for example, poor sleep hygiene. So people who have very disordered sleep, uh, people who are very stressed due to work and life events, obesity, which you know might not be a good thing for many other reasons, not only for fibrosis, because many people with pulmonary fibrosis actually have other conditions as well, such as diabetes, high blood pressure, and some of of these things may actually get to you faster than the fibrosis. So it's important to really have a healthy lifestyle as much as possible. It's important to keep exercising, to keep moving, because that will keep you going for longer and will help you cope with flare-ups of the condition. So for example, if you're getting a chest infection, pneumonia, if you are in the best shape that you can be, you'll probably be able to handle that a lot better. So obviously, this uh, answer to, to this question is a little bit convoluted, but unfortunately I cannot give you an exact number because like I said, it depends on the type of fibrosis, on the extent of fibrosis, the underlying diagnosis, what each patient may have in terms of other uh, health problems that may be there. So please check with your doctor to understand your subtype of pulmonary fibrosis and what can be done in your case. Remember to treat all the other conditions that you may be suffering from. So if you're suffering from diabetes, from high blood pressure, from any other 
health problems, it's important to monitor and treat these appropriately because it will help you cope better with everything. But I feel I need to delve into this topic a little bit better and longer in future videos. So please stay tuned. Subscribe to the channel if you are interested in interstitial lung diseases and pulmonary fibrosis because I plan to develop this further as much as I can. Hope this was helpful and I'll see you in future videos. Do leave me any comments that you may have or questions and I'll try to answer them slowly, slowly. All the best and good health.